New Year and welcome to today's worship on behalf of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, also known as the Old Town Church in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. My name is Pastor Kelly and I am so glad that you've come to join us in worship today. Friends, please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. Now we always begin worship in Old Town by taking a deep breath because it helps us to center ourselves, to quiet our souls, and to become more present in the spaces we're in. So will you please join me in taking a deep breath? And now let's join together in our opening hymn, We Three Kings. Friends, let's join together in a moment of prayer. God of eternal hope, you place a light into every darkness and a star into every sky. And yet we prefer to walk in the darkness of concern and despair. We cover the light of possibility with our constant worry. We walk bent over with care and concern and we miss the brightness of your stars. We fear the worst, distrust the best, and forge ahead on our own, not noticing your outstretched hand. Shine your light on our path. Like the Magi from afar, guide us with your star. Amen. My friends, the good news is that when we stumble in the darkness, God places a star in the sky and a light to shine on our path. Hear these words of assurance from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the peoples but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Friends, our scripture reading today contains the end of our beloved Christmas story when the Magi from afar come to visit the baby. 
Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, and we'll be hearing verses 1 through 12. If you have an Old Town Bible at home, today's reading can be found in the New Testament, the back of the Bible, on page 2. Friends, I invite you to hear these words. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judah, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And after having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. My friends, here ends today's reading. May God help us to further understand this amazing story. Amen. Friends, let's take another deep breath. And let's take a moment to center ourselves and to quiet our souls as together we listen for the voice of our still speaking God. Gracious and loving God, come to us in this place, in the calming of our minds, in the longing of our hearts, in the stillness of this moment, Speak, O oh Lord, for your children are listening. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. After Christmas, as I was looking for something to watch on TV, I decided to watch a few Pixar shorts on the Disney Channel. Each Pixar short or movie was less than 20 minutes, but it was full of emotion and it quickly drew me in, connecting me to the characters and their story. By the end of the short, I was left feeling warmed by the relationship that I quickly formed with the characters and the story and was filled with the wisdom of their experience. The best part of all is that it happened quite quickly and I didn't have to commit to an entire movie. You see, today's society moves so fast and people's attention spans shut down quickly 
when they feel that they aren't being instantly fed. That started me thinking, what if during the season after Epiphany, when we're all called to go out and bring the light of Christ into the world, we met the world where it is. Not expecting them to come worship like us, but bringing the good news to them. In short, sweet, yet affirming and empowering ways. The problem is, what about our regular old towners who like worship the way they like it? Well, I guess we could make separate videos for them and for the people out in the world that we're trying to reach. I quickly felt exhausted before I began, and so I decided to forget the whole idea. But something woke me up in the middle of the night, and I heard a voice in the back of my head saying, Faith is not about keeping people comfortable. It's about challenging them to stretch and to grow while inviting new people to join them on the journey. The truth is, there's good news and bad news about holding virtual worship. The good news is it allows us to reach out to so many more people in ways that we never imagined before. The bad news is that in doing so, it changes things that we've always done before. The week before Christmas, I shared with you the week before Christmas story. Our worship watch numbers were high that week with 95 views. Dan and I decided to clip just the poem out of the worship video and post it on Facebook by itself to see what would happen. It was shared by 30 people and viewed more than 1,500 times. Now I totally understand that it was a cute poem and it was the week before Christmas, but it got me thinking about ways while we're worshiping virtually anyway that we can reach out to even more people. So for the next eight weeks until February 17th, just during the season after Epiphany, when Jesus called his disciples to follow him, to make new disciples, and to share the light of Christ with the world, I thought it might be a good idea for us to call others to follow Jesus, to make disciples, and to share the light of Christ with the world too. So for the next eight weeks, we're going to share worship via an Old Town Short each week. And I'm going to ask all of you to not just watch it, but to share it on your Facebook page, if you have one, inviting others to see it too. Getting a glimpse of Old Town as they receive an affirmation of faith for the week. Now don't worry, we're also going to be offering our regular worship and household huddle, but our epiphany challenge this year is to focus on spreading the good news as far as we can between now and Ash Wednesday. Have you ever looked up at the night sky and seen all the stars? It's amazing, isn't it? Well, I wonder if you were going to follow one of those stars, how would you know which one to follow? Well, every day we have as many choices as there are stars in the sky as to which path to walk and who and what to follow. We can follow the brightest or the shiniest. We can follow the one that calls out to us or the one that we feel a deep connection to. Or we can choose to jump around, following different stars, different days. Well, the wise men in Jesus' day had done their research. Hold on, 
Actually, many believe that the wise men, rather than being kings or magi, were astronomers, scientists who spent their lives studying the stars. And that star in the sky that led the wise men to Bethlehem may have been just like the star of Bethlehem that we saw in the sky just a few weeks ago. A star that appeared to be bigger and brighter than the others because rather than being a star, it was an alignment of planets. But does that change the story? No. Because the star or the planets or whatever that light in the sky was that the wise men or the kings or the magi or the astronomers followed led them out of their comfort zone. It led them out of the place that they called home. It led them to a far off land to be introduced to a child. A child who was vastly different than them but who loved them unconditionally. As the story goes, they presented the child with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, worshiping him and recognizing his presence and his importance, and then disappearing into the night, never to be seen or heard of again. What a strange twist. So why is this such an important part of our Christmas story? Why do we set aside an entire day, Epiphany, to celebrate such a brief, short encounter? Because this story tells of a light shining in the darkness that can be experienced and seen by anyone, anywhere, no matter who they are, where they're from or where they are on life's journey. The story of the wise men following the star opens the door for something incredible, something even more exciting and something even more life-changing, not just for a chosen few, but for the whole entire world. Because that child that the star led them to became the light that shined in the darkness not to lead us all to him like the star led the wise men but instead so that he might light the way for us sometimes leading us out of our comfort zones and sometimes even calling us outside of our homes and our church buildings to meet people who may look very different than us or believe very different than us or live very different than us but so that we might be more like him loving others unconditionally as we continue to share that light with the world and the coolest part of all is that Jesus shines the light on our path to help us use the gifts that we've been given that we might be the best that we can be. Not so that the light will shine on us, but so that we can reflect it in the darkness for others. So, friends, in the week ahead, may you take some time to look up at the stars at night, knowing that the number of stars that you have to follow are immeasurable. But the light that shines in the darkness, that is the greatest gift of all. Because not only does that light show us the way, but that light loves you more than you could ever imagine.
friends, as we begin a new calendar year, and as over and over again, we get pulled out of our comfort zones, we long for things that feel familiar. That's one of the reasons why our stories of faith bring us such joy, because we've heard them before and we know them in our hearts. Today, we heard the story of the star in the sky that led the wise men to the Christ child. A star in the sky. What a simple, everyday, ordinary thing. And yet God used it to share abundant hospitality with the world. Our story of communion also uses everyday, ordinary things. And it too is a story of abundant hospitality. It's a story that everyone is welcomed into and the grace and the unconditional love that it offers has no end. Now I know that virtual communion doesn't feel the same as communion in our sanctuary, but I think we've all learned a lot about communion over the last nine months. And though the formality of communion has been relaxed as we eat and drink whatever it is we have at home, I think in some ways the meaning may run even deeper. I don't know about you, but I think about communion more when I use the coffee cup that I drink from during communion, or I eat the crackers that I broke as we shared our meal together. It's become more real and a part of life in a wholly new way, rather than something sacred, sterile, and separate. So friends, I invite you to get something to eat and something to drink as we remember the story together. It was in the upper room with his friends, the disciples, when Jesus took bread a piece of bread that was right in front of him on the table. He picked it up and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, after supper, he took a cup, a cup that was right in front of him on the table. He lifted it and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Isn't it amazing how sometimes simple words and everyday items can bring us such a sense of comfort and reassurance? Friends, will you please join me in a moment of prayer? Loving God, we thank you for the everyday things that bring us closer to you. For stars in the sky, for stories of faith, and for simple food and drink. We ask that you'd bless us and the meal that we're about to share. May we be filled to overflowing with your love and light and abundant hospitality that we might then go out into the world sharing it with others. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, this is the bread of heaven. And this is the cup of salvation. Will you join me in prayer once again? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for the everyday ordinary things that lead us to you. Grant us the wisdom to discern what is right and true and guide us that we might know which star to follow. 
Oh God, listen now as your children lift both silently and aloud the names of those on our prayer list and the names of those who weigh heavy on our hearts today. Oh God, we know that even in the darkness, your light shines. And we see and feel your presence in the joys that surround us. As we walk into this new year, guide us and give us courage, patience, and strength. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, the true light, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Friends, in just a moment, we're going to hear a gift of song by Kevin Graves. As you listen to it, I'd ask that you think about how you can reflect the light of Christ out into the world. And then, as always, whether you normally worship with us or you worship somewhere else, I would ask that you please remember to support your local church. If you'd like to make an online donation to the First Congregational Church of North Attleboro, you can follow the link below or our mailing address will be in the YouTube description if you'd like to mail in a donation. And as always, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your generosity. And now for our gift of song. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the dark shining Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine now on me shine on me shine Jesus shine fill this land with the Father's glory blaze, Spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence From the shadows into your radiance By the blood I may enter your brightness Search me, try me, consume all my darkness Shine on me Shine on me Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Amen. 
And now, my friends, the time has come for us to go back out into the world. Let's go out into the world reflecting the light of Christ, being assured that God walks with us each and every step of the way. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each and every one of you, now and forevermore. And may God's church say, Amen.